In these lessons, we'd like to find out the positions of the planet on the orbit using the Kepler's second law. So from the Kepler's second law, we have uh, these relations. Also, R can be expressed with this, and F dot can be expressed with this one. Using the, this equation, so we'd like to find out the positions of the planet on the orbit can be obtained by solving this equation because this is the Kepler equation. So we are going to derive these formulas. So we start with the equations of the 1 over 2 and a squares square root 1 minus e squares equal 1 over 2 r squares df dt. Actually, this is equal to the ds dt. Right? Then, 1 over 2 appears in the both sides. For the r square df dt, you can multiply it. r times r f dot. This is, you can substitute this expression here. Then it becomes a squared 1 minus e cosine e squared 1 minus e squared e dot. So this is anyway squared squared 1 minus e squared. A squared appears in the both sides. Squared 1 minus e squared also. Then finally we have obtained the distillations. Okay, got the distillation. Then we'd like to derive the Kepler equation to discover the position of the planet on the orbit. So this is the equation we derived. Then we could change the left hand side df if you move the this parenthesis inside it becomes e minus e sine e equal n you could derive this equation and if you integrate these equations it becomes e minus sine e equal nt plus integration constant <laughs> so integration constant can be obtained applying the initial conditions e equal 0 at a t equal tau <laughs> so applying the, these equations here then 0 n tau plus c so c is a minus n tau. Then substitute back to the, this equation, you will get this equation. We call it this is Kepler equation. By solving the, this equation, we could find the positions of a particles on the orbit. But nobody succeeded to find the explicit expression of E as a function of T because E appears here and the inside of the sine function. We are going to study the method for approximate solution of E. So how to solve the Kepler equation? So E minus E sine E. We are changing the, this equation. Here E is expressed in these forms. And uh, in the case of the planet, eccentricity is really, really small values. Then compared with the first term, second term is much, much smaller. We approximate E sub 1 is M. But in this situation, there is no contribution from the second term. So to improve the solutions, we substitute this approximate solution to the 
original equation to find the second approximate solution. So e sub 2 is m plus e times sine e sub 1. So this is going to be e m plus e sine m. And we have discovered the second step, approximate solutions. Then for the third step, we sub substitute this e sub to the original equation to find the third step, approximate solution. And keep repeating the same step to improve the solutions. This is a uh, how to solve the Kepler equation in the approximate method. Then we have to check the what's happened to the errors. So exact solution is a e equal m plus e sine e. And considering the else approximate solution has an error of the epsilon sub n. So this is a capital E is an exact solution, that one. Then, if we, we are going to consider the, if the error is increasing or decreasing, substitute this equation here to find out the next approximate solution, as we have done before. Then, substitute. Then, e sub n plus 1 is a, uh, uh, this is second term is error, plus m e sin e plus e sub n we substitute here then from to the here to the here we use the addition formulas for a trigonometric function so sin e cosine epsilon n plus cosine e sin epsilon n and epsilon n is smaller than once, then this becomes nearly one. This is becomes nearly epsilon n. Then we are going to have uh, this equation. And the first terms, and then second terms, exactly equal to the e, because of the, this original equation. Using the, this equation, it's going to be cancelled out. Then we have a relation for the errors epsilon sub n plus 1 equal e cosine e times epsilon n. So finally we have a relation for the epsilon sub n equal e cosine e to the n minus 1 epsilon 1. So epsilon as a vertical lines and the horizontal line is a number of the step. Then epsilon 1 is a original error. It looks like a decreasing because e this e is smaller than 1. Okay, this is n equal to 1 and decreasing. So error is decreasing. So we could safely use this method. If we repeat the same calculation a number of times, our solution is very close to the real solutions. This is the end of this session.